so what was the question again? Oh, wait, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, <clears throat> because I am fast and slick. And plus, I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Burumanaka, my name is Rio, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 pm to 7. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music. <laughs> In this bulletin, MPs begin Parliament sitting, reflections on opening speech by President Ratue Peli Nailatikau. Alleged killer of teenage girl charged and brought to court. And Transport Minister adamant on getting bus e-ticketing off the ground. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. The role of the military has come up in the first sitting of the new parliament as MPs debate the president's opening speech this week. Ellen Stalls has more. The result of the vote is eyes 41 and 9 did not vote. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbainimarama in his maiden speech has paid tribute to the RFMF for standing by him as the military commander. He told the House of Representatives the military could not stand by and watch Fiji be destroyed by corruption and nepotism. History will eventually make its own pronouncement, uh, pronouncement on the events of 2006. But those of us in the military who believed passionately in national unity came to the conclusion that the fabric of our nation was unraveling. I would also like to place on record my sincere thanks to all the Sodelpa... However, opposition leader Ro Temumu Kepa, in her address, also made reference to the military, saying it's been involved in every coup in Fiji's history. Madam Speaker, what His Excellency omitted to say was that coups cannot occur or succeed in this country unless the military is involved. And we therefore look to the new military commander to return our military back to the professional and disciplined force it once was and to recommit itself to acting in defense of our people and not against them. Madam Speaker, I believe the question of the transparency and accountability, and accountability of this parliamentary process is something that in time will reveal itself. The Prime Minister has stressed in Parliament that national security has always been the responsibility of RFMF. Only a radical intervention in 2006 was capable of getting Fiji back on track, of establishing once and for all the universal democratic principle that all men and women are equal. Mbani Marama reached out to opposition, in particular the leader, Rote Mumu Kepa, to work together on policies that will move Fiji forward. He says the opposition should continue to critique the government's work, but not just for the sake of doing it. Parliament resumes tomorrow. For FBC News, I'm Ellen Stalls. Opposition leader Rote Mumukepa used her first parliamentary address to critique a number of government initiatives. Being a former education minister, Rote Mumu spoke at length about government scholarships. According to the opposition leader, the government's topper scheme for scholarships is disproportionate and has been dominated by one race. From the figures that we have seen, that the indo Fijians are outstripping all the other communities, including the indigenous Fijians and especially the minorities. The, that is the part Europeans, Rotumans, people from Rambi and Kiowa. Rote Mumu claims merit alone should not be the only criteria to getting a good quality education because of the need for equality. National Federation Party President and Opposition Member Tupon Ranindalo spoke about the alienation and ostracism faced after the coups of 1987 and 2000. She says people have the same sentiments about Itauke land provisions in the 2013 constitution, claiming that indigenous land is no longer protected. This factor causes feelings of apprehension, fear, alienation and ostracism for many of the indigenous Fijians. 
They believe that this land is the source of our identity as Fijians separate and apart from all of the beautiful people and races from different lands who have their own unique and rich cultures rooted in other lands. <clears throat> Removing entrenched constitutional provisions with regard to native land is thus alienating for them and ostracizing. The busy ticketing system is likely to be implemented soon with the Transport Minister getting involved. Pieti Kunduandua says the government has provided a lot of flexibility on this initiative and it's time for results. Ritika Pratap reports. The bus e-ticketing system was introduced in January last year but didn't last very long. Transport Minister Pieti Kunduandua says their objective is clear. They want the electronic ticketing system used by all bus companies and passengers. I'm going to set a definite deadline where every public service vehicle is going to be using e-ticketing by a certain date. And this is for the benefit of the people and also for the industry, particularly the bus industry. The minister will be meeting with the Land Transport Authority, the bus industry and e-ticketing service providers to sort things out once and for all. It's been prolonging for too long. We now want to set some clear objectives of what we want to achieve. We've exercised a lot of flexibility in the past. I am going to be working with the board and all of the stakeholders to see that this is come. This, this now comes to a successful conclusion so that everyone can benefit out of this incentive. Tikunduandua also wants to know why the initial program failed. There are many issues, there are many issues. I mean, you know, uh, not, not everyone is free of blame. But as I said, we need now to come together and set ourselves some definite goals. And everyone should come on board so that we can resolve this as soon as possible. Under the new minimum standard requirement for e-ticketing gazetted by the government, the e-ticketing should operate on a tap-on, tap-off system. This means a passenger logs into the bus console upon boarding and logs off when disembarking. This will decide the fee charged. Ritika Pratap, FPC News. The 35-year-old man alleged to have murdered a 14-year-old girl of Viria settlement in Naitasiri has been charged with murder and produced in the Nausori Magistrate Court this morning. Mukesh Lal has been remanded until Friday when the matter will be called at the Suva High Court. The incident happened late last month when the 14-year-old girl was reported missing from home. She was found dead in a vacant house two days later. Police found the accused lying injured next to the victim. Lal was admitted at the CWM hospital for about two weeks. Coming up, FNU hosts International Food Festival. Gold FM, all of the classic hits. I hope you're having fun so far. You're listening to The Ride. And I'm Kara, taking you through your afternoon. Stay with me to listen to more awesome classics right here on The Ride. Mulubunaka, for awesome sounds in the afternoon. Wonderful, wonderful classics. Join me on The Ride every weekday right here on Gold FM, all of the classic hits from 2 to 7. Just don't ask me what it was. Welcome back. This is FBC News. Assistant Health Minister Veena Bhatnagar says she will be visiting hospitals and health centers to tell medical staff about the need for compassion and sympathy. She says this is one of the most common complaints against medical services. Most of the complaints I got on radio weren't about facilities. They were about the attitude of healthcare staff, our doctors, nurses, and ancillary staff often work in highly charged environments and an atmosphere of pressure and crisis, but they must always be sympathetic to the needs of patients and their families, and that is the message I intend to take with me as I visit hospitals and healthcare centers throughout the country. Assistant Minister for Finance, Public Service, Public Enterprise and Trade and Tourism Lorna Eden says deliberate government policies need to be made to grow the tourism industry. She says one step is to improve data collection through the Hotel Intelligence Survey. We also plan on spreading the tourist dollar beyond the shores of Viti Levu to the outer islands including Vanu Levu, Taviuni and Kandavu. 
our focus will be on improving sea and air access to these remoter areas. This will help build sustainable growth for the country as a whole. Tourism Fiji will be empowered to focus on new markets with renewed vigour. President Rato Epele Nalatikau opened two international events in Nandi today, the International Food Festival and the International Conference on Oceans and Rivers. It's a unique opportunity to learn about food and at the same time talk on important issues like climate change and natural disasters. Christopher Chand reports. This event is the first of its kind. Food from more than 30 countries will be on display at the week-long festival at the FNU campus in Namaka, Nandi. This represents a rather scintillating opportunity for us all to enjoy food from all over the world as well as to see demonstrations on how these are prepared. Celebrity chefs like Lan Sito know too well what this means for our food and cuisine industry. This is the first time that something's been organised from within the country, so it, it, it signifies that we're on a path of developing our own cuisine now, you know. In a separate conference altogether, there are more serious discussions that will take place on the importance of oceans and rivers. Water will remain one of the most fundamental resources that we need to talk about, we need to discuss. Nandi is a good example of a town which time and again has been battered by constant floods and this has been happening very frequently in the recent years. The two events will definitely be, as they say, food for thought for the participants. Christopher Chand, FBC News. And now we join Christopher Chand live from our Nandi office. Chris, what's the idea behind hosting these two events simultaneously? The FNU is doing this as part of its ongoing initiative to provide strong and meaningful interface between education, training and the real world of commerce. The International Food Festival will be held every year over the next eight years. Each year, a unique theme will be selected around which the food festival will be organized. This will channel focus on important aspects of our food culture. Next year's theme will be greens, followed by meats, then roots, etc. This year's theme is oceans and rivers, and thus it was also an opportunity to have discussions on climate change and natural disasters. Thanks so much for that, Chris. Fiji Television is in talks with telecommunications company Digicel about the possible sale of shares or outright purchase of EMTV. EMTV is a subsidiary of Fiji TV in Papua New Guinea and the country's main free-to-air television station. Business Melanesia reports the CEO of Fijian Holdings, a major shareholder in Fiji TV, as well as its board chairman, met in PNG last week. The meeting was to discuss options with Digicel, which is looking to purchase up to 30% or all of EMTV. Digicel was granted a television license by the PNG government in June this year. Monday Night Sports now. Here's Jamie with the latest. Welcome back to a brand new week of sports. And what a way to start the week after the Fiji 7s win last night in Australia. We'll have everything Fiji 7s after the break from players, coach and captain. The fans in Fiji and Australia that celebrated the win. And even a special mention in today's parliamentary sitting. Also after the break, Super Football fans had another reason to celebrate last night as the capital city side took home the 2014 Courts IDC. Details coming up. Choo choo choo! Hey hey, Namaste Fiji! Aapke har ek problem ke dawa lekar main aa gayi hu. 9 se 12 baje tak aapki saheli reno. Choo choo choo! 40 ne? 20 ka dikhna hai. मैं हूँ ना आपके साथ में मिर्ची एफएम पर 9 से 12 बजे तक मंडे टू फ्राइडे मिर्ची इट्स हॉट What a way to top off Fiji Day celebrations with the Vodafone Fiji 7s team winning the Gold Coast tournament last night beating Samoa 31-24 in the final. 
Though at first the Fiji side looked like they were going to stroll through the finals untouched, the young Samoan team kept fans on the edge of their seats in the second half, making for a fantastic final game. Here's Indra Singh with a recap of last night's match. Fiji champions of the Gold Coast in 2014, 31 points to 24. It was a game of two halves as Fiji and Samoa put on a brilliant display of Pacific Rugby. Two titles in the last series, Tokyo and Dubai, and they're off to a flyer in 2014, 2015 in the HSBC Sevens World Series. Um, this weekend's been a good weekend in Fiji as well. My wife was at home celebrating Fiji Day um, back in Navua, and uh, she's going to have an even better weekend now alongside all her Fijian friends. So look, thank you very much. Keep the faith. You know, we've got a long season ahead. Don't get ahead of the game. Um, these boys have got to keep their feet on the ground so that we can really go well in Dubai and, uh, and defend our title there. Fiji got off to a flyer with quick tries in the first half. Too wide, too wide. He gets it out now to Domalolai. 40th anniversary of independence and now running on to it. He's stuck out. Oh my goodness, Senefano Fakao. Gets it out to Rawatha. The double round. Five other Samoans showed they were not in the final to make up the numbers and put in a gallant showing after the restart. Now they're on the score sheet. That's more like the Samoans we know and love. And on the far side, Louis! And racing for the corner. That's on for Lau! Drops it down. They might have to check this one. No, a little sound pulled them down. But now. Support play from Phil, from Hill, it's Bill Lowy. Two days, um, the final was uh, a roller coaster. You know, we were really in command there, and Samoa came back so well. They're, they're imperious at the break, at the kickoffs, and back to where they were when they won the World Series. So, look, please, we got off to a start. It's going to be a very competitive series. Fijian skipper Osea Kolinisau and his players say it was a team effort, but they needed to step up when Samoa put Fiji under pressure. Uh, we were nervous. We knew Samoa were a good side. When they came back, I just told the boys that we needed to get the ball back because in the second half we didn't get much possession. They were winning all the ball from kickoff. So I told them, just get one ball, let's score this, and we finish it. And we thank God that it went according to plan. Yeah, it was a good team effort. Uh, uh, we trained really hard prior to this tournament. We worked really hard. And I guess the boys uh, deserve the win today. Now back to preparations before the Dubai and South Africa tournaments with the national team due to arrive back on Wednesday. Interesting, FBC Sports. Every tournament in the RB World 7 Series is popular not only for the action on the field but off it as well. And FBC's Tzale Ndaudakadaka caught up with the large contingent that turned up to the Siba Stadium to cheer on the Fiji side at the Gold Coast 7s. Fiji fans had plenty to cheer about from the national side's outstanding performance at the Gold Coast Sevens. Diehard fans turned up, some in the most outrageous costumes, to support the team as well as enjoy the atmosphere. And it is the best atmosphere you can ever get anywhere. And with all the Fijian players and people over here, my, this is like home. I really enjoyed the, the atmosphere. There's a lot of, uh, it's multiracial. Uh, you meet up with, uh, we, you catch up with uh, friends and relatives coming from Fiji and uh, yeah, not only that we, we really enjoyed uh, the Fiji team coming over. Um, I've been here for seven years and ever since we had the Gold Coast Sevens I've been here and every time you see all the Fijians get together once a year and it's always the Gold Coast Sevens. Good atmosphere. It was not hard to find the Fiji fans with the national colors sky blue prominent throughout the arena. The fishing community here, they, they come out in numbers as you've seen. There's all different races from Fiji. Oh, it, it, it just says, you know, how much we Fijians over here in uh, Brisbane, we unite when it comes to, a, to an occasion like this. No, no, no. Chanting of the Fiji fans and the beating of the tumbler resonated around the Seabus Stadium whenever Fiji played. Judging by the reception this year, the national side will continue to attract the vocal crowd whenever they come to the Gold Coast Sevens. Talendo the Kavak, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, Fiji has taken the lead on the RB World Series points table. 
Fiji is in the number one spot on 22 points, followed by Samoa, England and South Africa. Defending champions New Zealand is fifth on 13 points after winning the plate final. Meanwhile, the pools for the Dubai Sevens to be held in November has also been announced. Fiji is pooled with Argentina, France and Brazil. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbainimarama has congratulated the Vodafone Fiji Sevens team for winning the Gold Coast Tournament in Australia last night. In his maiden address in Parliament this morning, Bainimarama says the team has done all Fijians proud. Talking about victory, I wish to formally congratulate our Rugby Sevens team for their magnificent victory over Samoa last night uh, to the win uh, in the Gold Coast Sevens in the IRB World Cup Series. Thank you. Well done, men, and Ben Ryan. You have done Fiji proud. Your victory was the icing on the cake after the successful launch of Parliament last week and the Fiji Day celebrations. The Gold Coast Sevens was enjoyed by many thanks to the live coverage by FBC TV. A huge crowd gathered at the 786 supermarket in Turek, Suva to get a clear glimpse of the final between Fiji and Samoa last night. One supermarket staff, Solo Farasiko, says they were delighted with the coverage. We are very glad tonight that uh, you know FBC is putting this live on for not only for Fiji but for the rest of the world, and we, we we are proud that we can put a screen on for everyone, not only for ourselves, for customers, for even people that walk down the street. As you know, Fiji loves sevens rugby, and it's in their blood, and we know we want to be part of that too. FBC will also air live the next round of the 2014-15 IRB Sevens, which is the Dubai Sevens that will be held on the 5th and the 6th of December. The Suva football team won the 2014 Courts Inter-District Championship at the ANZ Stadium in Suva yesterday. Playing against the Jet Setters, it was never going to be easy for the Whites. Rahit Dale with the details. Please. And those are some of the stats as the Suva side. The Suva football side had already been denied victory three days prior to the final against Nandi as they drew a 1-1 in the pool stages. But this time around, the Southerners had other ideas. I tell you, what we achieved today has come from the hard work for all the players. You know, this team, one thing that, that brought us today is the unity that we have throughout the whole year. And we stick by each other, we stay in camp together, and it's hard for us. But I think for come and achieve this big, you know, big goal, and I think it's, it's, it's a job well done for all of everybody. Both teams tried hard to get on the score sheet, uh, but both goalkeepers were on target and came up with brilliant saves to deny any goals. It was left to former Nandi striker Napoleon Ingasseva Catini to score the winner, but this time around, the color of the jersey he was wearing was white. The winning captain says that the win wouldn't have been possible without the commitment of all players. Uh, when we were one man down, uh, I just told uh, we we just had to regroup. Because uh, against Nandi, they were just counter-attacking and uh, I just want to thank the boys for the 110 uh, performance that they gave today. And it was a great effort. Even though we were one man down, uh, we still had that advantage over them. And that was just awesome. Man. Suba has now two titles in back this season, after also taking out the National League title earlier this season. The Suva officials also state that commitment and hard work has paid off for their team. Work is uh, important, you have to be sincere. Important things is to be sincere because the Lord is always there to help you if you are sincere. That's the message I always give it to the boys too. And uh, good planning and good preparation always helps the team to win any tournament. Now with the 2014 Courts Inter-District Championships done and dusted, it could be said that the Suva soccer team are the champions of Fiji soccer this year. This year's IDC title win is sure to remain in the minds of the Suva fans for a very long time. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. And the Fiji Football Association also named the National Senior Training Squad in preparation for the 2015 Pacific Games. Standout Suva goalkeeper Uleasi Tamani Sao, along with veteran Peter Rambo and Ravinesh Karan Singh are notable inclusions. Also getting a call-up is Rewa's Chone Kalautani, Naranga skipper Luke Rawandamu and Lautoka's Ilias Salino. The squad marches into camp this weekend. And that is your sports for tonight. It's back to Jackie now with business. <laughs> Tourism arrivals for the first seven months of this year is at its highest compared to the last four years, says Acting Tourism Fiji CEO Ken Freer. 
Fiji's two biggest markets, Australia and New Zealand, have grown respectively to see more people coming to our shores. Freer did not have the exact figure on our visitor arrival so far this year, but says Australia has increased by 3% and New Zealand by 11%. We need to ensure that these people are staying a good length of time, preferably longer than they are now, and doing more activities and therefore spending more whilst they're here because that's how we derive, ultimately derive more positive economic benefits from the tourism industry. The New Zealander has been the acting Tourism Fiji CEO for five months since the departure of Rick Hamilton in May. Tourism Fiji has also indicated opening an office in Shanghai, China. It's a new week and it's weather time with Trish. A great start to the week, Jackie. Fine weather was experienced over most places today. Uh, most centers such as Nani Lotokombai had cloudy fine weather and cloudy skies throughout the day. The rest of the centers had cloudy skies all day also. Now with temperatures, Suva 27, Nani 31, Savu Savu 28 and Lambasa hit 33. Tuesday's forecast, Suva and Savo Savo should have fine weather in the morning and also cloudy skies, whereas Nani Lotoka and Ba and Lambasa might have cloudy skies all day also. For Mariners, southeasterly winds 15 to 20 knots and moderate to rough seas. This beautiful picture of a sunrise over Nandi was sent in by Mahinesh Bhagwan. Tonight's main points, MPs begin Parliament setting reflections on the opening speech by President Ratu Epeli Nalatikau. Opposition leader questions government scholarship program. And Transport Minister adamant on getting bus e-ticketing off the ground. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj, or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News, or simply hashtag FBC News. That's all from the team tonight. Join us again tomorrow evening. Good evening. <laughs>